I filmed myself in Paris every single day for the last 95 days, and I've only used four things, and none of them, none, none of this was involved. Hold on, I gotta put this down because my, my hands are very, very full. We'll talk about all four, but the first and most important are simply this and this. Phone first. This is the main tool that you're gonna need to film yourself when you're in Paris, and I think you probably already know this. Anybody trying to sell you big cameras, gimbals, tripods, all that extra stuff, they're just trying to weigh you down and maybe make an affiliate fee on the side, which I'll, I have an affiliate link for you as well, but just one. <laughs> and I'm trying to keep you as light and nimble as possible. I don't have one for the phone. You can just get whatever phone you want. I prefer my Galaxy S23 Ultra. I love this thing. There's the S24 that's out now. I'm, I'm filming myself right now with an iPhone. I've done both, gone back and forth over time, but the two reasons I've ended up coming back to Samsung over the years has been the lenses and the color profile. Out of the box, Samsung footage just looks great. Like iPhone footage can look amazing, especially if you want to do color correction later, but when I'm running and gunning around Paris like I have been lately, I don't have the time for color correction. Do you have the time for color correction? Maybe you do. But out of the box, the Samsung footage just looks more appealing to me. It makes my life a little bit easier. Also, when I'm talking about lenses, I mean all these things right here. They can make a huge difference and give you a lot of options and flexibility in stylistic choices without carrying like actual big camera lenses. I mean, this is obviously how you manage to get some long shots in the Metro, but you can make it even longer. Hold on, watch this. This is why the lenses are so important and why for me, it's always worth the extra money. It's how you can get really nice long shots like this. So on my phone, these are the lenses and I'll show you the difference that they make. Wide, normal, or your main camera, 3X, and then 10X, which is getting kind of extreme for this circumstance, like the way that I have this set up, but you get the idea. Telephoto, I love it. The 3X is also really nice for getting these kind of close-up shots without having to have like the camera right in front of you like this. It gives you a little bit of a flatter composition, including a little bit more of the environment without the distortion of having it really close. And the wide angle in particular is really good for establishing shots. Like, where am I going? Where am I right now? Giving you a broader picture. Yeah, this raises the question of how am I actually filming myself, filming myself? And the answer is, can you X2? <laughs> I freaking love this thing so much. This is the Kenu Stance Plus. Now, this is the thing that I do have an affiliate link for below, but the video is not sponsored. I did actually reach out to them and let them know I was making this video in case they wanted to sponsor it because this is basically gonna turn into an ad for them for a moment here, but I really genuinely love this thing. While they didn't sponsor the video, they did send me a handful to give away for free. There's a giveaway going on on Instagram over the weekend. You could win a couple of these and you don't even have to come to Paris to get one. Having a phone is great, but it's not enough. Obviously, you can only set it up in so many ways, in so many places and to get very few shots. You need a tripod of some sort. And I used to carry around like a variety of different Joby tripods, always scaling down until I found what was their tiniest little foldable tripod that fit in my pocket right with my wallet. I loved it, but they stopped making them and it's still an extra thing I have to carry. The Kenu Stance Plus is a device that all I have to do is take and stick to the back of my phone and it slides right into my pocket. I don't have to think about it because it's always there. This thing is slim, sturdy, metallic, and magnetic. So I can just kind of hang out here and then my phone can hang out on that and then I can film myself in all kinds of crazy situations. I can hang it, I can stand it, I can stick it, I can put it almost anywhere and get almost any shot. It's not perfect. It is lacking a few elements of functionality as far as certain angles, certain places and times. It obviously has its limits, but the fact that this thing doubles as both a hook and a magnet gives you a lot of options. Like for one, I can just stick this to so many signs in the Metro. And if I have to, whoops, I can always like hook it as well which makes it a lot easier to get shots, you know, entering and exiting the Metro. If you don't have a MagSafe case, you can make your own MagSafe case with this tiny little magnetic ring that they include in the package. It's, it's sticky on this side. Now I can hang my phone on that metal bar in the middle of my window and voila, I can talk to my camera. One downside that I found to having this on the back of my Samsung in particular though, is that the S Pen doesn't work properly with a big magnet on the back of your phone. I didn't realize that was what was going on until the latest update and then I got an alert from my phone. So just be aware of that. And you can just walk around filming yourself like a weirdo like me. Which also raises the question, how can you even hear me right now? <laughs> oh my gosh, he's very excited. We're gonna walk a long ways away first. Sit, stay. Okay, come here. The magic of audio over distance right now is being carried out by this tiny little microphone in my hands. Wireless microphones, they're magic. I do have to sync this up later when I'm editing it. It's worth it. Let's say you get shots like this. 
DJI's wireless microphone set has been my favorite for a long time. I'm wearing one of them right now, which is why there's a hole in here. But it comes with a receiver and two microphones, which you can then clip on to like clothing or whatever. And then it should also have a magnet. The one that I'm wearing right now is magneted to my uh, shirt that I'm wearing under my sweatshirt. And the sweatshirt then acts as a wind buffer. They do come with little wind buffers. That's what that fuzzy thing on the end of the microphone is. If you've ever seen someone wearing one of those, if you put it under a layer of clothing, it tends to do the same thing with just a little bit of a reduction in sound quality. This thing's a lifesaver. The case itself is actually a battery pack, which you can see is fully charged right now. And then you are able to use this USB-C or lightning adapter on the bottom of it to plug it directly into your phone and then record the audio on your phone. I, saw, I never do that. It's like a step too far for me. Usually when I leave the house, I leave this thing behind and just wear the microphone out and about or put it in the coin pocket of my jeans. It's small enough to fit in there. Don't have to worry about anything. And I take it out, attach it to whatever, record it. You don't have to put it on your clothes either. You can attach it to your sunglasses, to your hat. You can hold it in your hand. There's so many things that you can do with it. So much fun you can have with it. You can put it in places where you wouldn't normally get sound and then capture whatever it is you're looking for. In general, I would say it's a massive level up because most people don't recognize that 60% of your film, whatever you're making, is audio. Everybody focuses on camera, which you don't need to. You have a phone, that's good enough. The microphones really free you up to to get a lot of different kinds of shots and compositions that would be impossible with just the phone. If I turn this microphone off and just use that audio, this is what sounds like. and maybe you never know what I said in the meantime, but the most important thing is that with this, I can go anywhere. And thanks to today's patron producer, Paul Garul, and all my patrons for supporting my channel and genuinely making this possible in a way that never would have been possible without you. Can't say thank you enough. I'm personally a huge fan of the DJI wireless audio set because it's smaller, it's very compact. And back when I got it, Rode was struggling to have the same full feature set, but Rode's audio is better. I'm not sponsored by either of them, so this is a lot bigger and blockier, more obvious. And I like the subtlety of this little guy right here. Now, of course, if you're not filming for a TikTok or for Reels, like you actually wanna do a vlog or some other kind of video, you're probably gonna need some editing software and maybe a rig to edit it on as well. If you are gonna edit on the road, and this is something that's saved my life in numerous situations, on the metro, in coffee shops, in cars, on planes, wherever. If you're in the market for a new computer, I have been a PC guy for a very long time and I still have my PC. I leave it at home because it's big, it's clunky, I don't wanna carry it anywhere. A MacBook Air will do you right. Like just this little 13 inch baseline MacBook Air costs like a thousand bucks, can handle 4K footage with simple timelines and is actually genuinely a lifesaver because it is light. It does doesn't require massive hefty cables and you can edit with the breeze. I do have some issues with heat. When I was in Thailand and some other circumstances, it can bog down a little bit. And obviously because I shoot primarily on a Samsung phone, it does make the interface between Android and Apple a bit of a pain. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. But aside from that, this thing is a dream and I love it. I might've been converted to Apple because of this computer. Which brings us to software. I'm an Adobe guy. I've been editing on Adobe Premiere for 22, 23 years at this point. That's insane. So I'm probably not gonna change anytime soon. That said, if you don't wanna get into the professional grade editing software, like you don't wanna be an editor, if you have Apple, iMovie is good enough. If you are on a Windows machine, it's a little bit harder to find something that's that simple and straightforward. However, DaVinci Resolve is free and professional grade, and a lot of people are switching to it, particularly for the color grading abilities within it. So if you are somebody who is using Apple Log and you wanna do a lot of color grading, that could be a very good option for you. And again, for full disclosure, DaVinci Resolve is not sponsoring me to say that, but they are my go-to free professional grade software recommendation all the time, even though I don't use them, which is why I turned them down when they asked if they could sponsor my channel, which is probably one of the biggest humble brags as somebody who's edited video for a very long time. That's a compliment. So thanks, if your team ever sees this, thanks DaVinci Resolve. And if you guys are like, who are you? Well, the only reason that you should need a bag in this entire setup is if you are bringing your laptop with you which I don't recommend, especially if you're on vacation in Paris, but if you're on the go and you're editing, who knows where. The nice thing about the MacBook Air is that it fits inside even a smaller camera bag. Like this thing goes almost anywhere a tablet will go, it makes it very easy to carry around. So whenever you see me carrying this bag, there's a good chance that I'm actually doing my editing on the go. And if you do have big cameras, and if you've been around on the internet for a while, this is a Peak Design bag. You're familiar with Peak Design at this point because it's, it's pretty obvious. The final piece is actually something that Paul brought up when we were having coffee just a minute ago, and that was like, how do you not give a fuck? It's probably the biggest piece in filming yourself when you're out and about. The only piece of advice that I can really give is just do it. 
It's one of those things that comes from repetition and just putting yourself in a situation where you give it a try, see how it goes, and ultimately you come to realize that like nobody really cares as long as you're not getting in the way, you're not being a pain in the butt. Like I'm not speaking too loudly right now. Nobody even notices that I'm talking to myself. And even in situations when you are very obviously talking to yourself, you're in the metro, you're setting your camera up somewhere where it is kind of getting in the way just a little bit. You'll never see those people again, for starters. And also, it's worth it. A little bit of social awkwardness leads to nice shots that you couldn't get any other way. And again, as long as you're not being a jerk, the only way you get over the nerves and the weirdness of it is to practice. You survived it last time, you'll survive it this time. It's actually kind of fun. And sometimes the attention can be nice and sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll wish you picked a different angle and a different shot and a different time and a different place. At the end of the day, all you really need is a good story, good sound, and like half decent video. Just take the pressure off a little bit and don't buy way too much equipment. Start with something simple, start with just your phone. And if you get to the point where you want to do stuff that you can't do anymore with your phone, you know, expand from there. But like I said, I've been doing this for three months now. Most of you probably didn't notice that I never used anything but my phone. The only exceptions for that have been a few drone shots when I've been traveling and like one or two action cam shots. But 99.99% .99 of all the shots in all the last 95 or 96 videos have been just with this phone right here. It's all you really need. There are obviously benefits to having real cameras. I'm not saying that there aren't, but I'm just saying for most of us, probably fine with just this. Anyway, that's what I've been using to film myself for the last few months. I'm gonna take a pause from the daily vlogging now, but I thought I'd make a point. Like I love walking around with just a phone in my pocket, creating on the go, and not having to worry about like all the gear. And if you're looking for a little bit of freedom, hopefully this does it for you too. And if you're coming to Paris, be sure to check out parisinmypocket.com, grab my guide, all the best tips to Paris, and I'll include some more tips on great spots for photos and all that in the very near future. We have a lot of fun stuff coming. Just gotta get, I gotta get, angle more of my time back towards that. And if Cooper's gonna give you any tip, it's make sure to eat grass while you're here because apparently it's delicious. Gross.